heart of the military that helps keep Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic in power. That's how Pentagon officials describe the airstrikes NATO will soon unleash. The primary goal of these strikes would be to stop, to stop the Serbs from continuing their attacks against the Albanians. Pentagon sources say the B-2 stealth bomber is likely to be in the first wave of attacks. The B-2 will be making its combat debut because of its ability to hit 16 targets in a single mission with 2,000 pounds satellite guided bombs that are unaffected by weather. It has that stealth capability. Their primary capability against us would be surface to air missiles and, and they won't see the B-2. It is awesome, its capability. Once the airstrikes are kicked off with a salvo of up to 100 cruise missiles, they will not pause, Pentagon sources say, unless President Milosevic is clearly capitulating. Milosevic knows the phone number of NATO, and he knows where to call when he wants the strikes to stop. Pentagon sources say NATO plans call for an indefinite bombing campaign that could go on for weeks and would target troops and tanks that are attacking the Kosovar Albanians, as well as command and control centers and other unspecified high-value targets. To make sure Mr. Milosevic gets the point, some of those high-value targets would be hit the first night, along with the primary objective, neutralizing air defenses. We hope that, um, that if military action is used, that it, at uh, an appropriate point, and we hope relatively quickly, that the Serbs will realize they've made a mistake and that diplomacy would have been a better solution than, than the use of force. U.S. high-tech weaponry will dominate the initial stages of the strike, but NATO sources say overall 45% of the strike aircraft will be European planes. And what happens if President Milosevic absorbs the bombing and doesn't give in? Well, then NATO will be left by default with a strategy of containment, meaning that there will have to be more airstrikes in the months ahead to keep President Milosevic in check. Judy? Jamie, what... American combat squadrons prepare at Aviano in Italy to go into action. They're among the 260 warplanes and an aircraft carrier that the Pentagon's committed to Operation Determined Force. If the order comes to attack, it's likely unmanned cruise missiles will lead the onslaught to minimize the risk to Allied air crews. Guided by terrain-following radar, it flies low and delivers accurately a high-explosive payload. From over 700 miles away, it can strike to within 30 feet of its designated target. And for the first time, British Tomahawks might be used, launched from the Royal Navy's newest submarine, HMS Splendid, 4,500 tons and already on patrol in the area. American B-2 bombers may deliver more missiles with a ceiling of 10 miles and stealth technology to cloak them from radar detection. In the air, Yugoslavia's resistance rests mainly on 14 Russian-built MiG-29s. They're of modern design and capable of more than 1,500 miles an hour, a match for many of NATO's aircraft. But it's Yugoslavia's ground defences, much stronger than Iraq's, that most worry NATO commanders. Belgrade has radar-guided missile batteries and more than 100 anti-aircraft artillery units. I think it's very good to see President Clinton and Prime Minister Baer both saying that there will be casualties, it won't be a walkover. Um, it, it is really going to be a very difficult uh, uh, operation because even after they've destroyed the air defences, they've still got to go after uh, Serbian forces on the ground. It's expected that after the initial attack, there would be a pause, allowing President Milosevic to count the cost and consider peace talks. If that failed, the aerial bombardment would resume, targeting missile sites, troop concentrations and air and naval bases. HMS Splendid proved her capability in weapons trials last November. Tonight, she and the rest of NATO's air and sea forces stand ready for a conflict which would inflict losses on both sides. Jeff Mead, Sky News. ...had a week's time to do it in. So if time is of the essence, what could be holding this up? Well, I think what they're doing, Joey, is really getting all of the um, different pieces of uh, equipment into place. I think they're also probably letting um, diplomacy have another run at it. Perhaps some of the uh, European uh, diplomats can, uh, can uh, persuade Milosevic and, and the country to uh, back down. Um, I think uh, also th the decision was made late by the uh, Secretary General, and I think probably now it's probably in the best interest to, to uh, wait, make sure that we've got all of the pieces of the puzzle together, and then I think you'll see the NATO forces, uh, probably the prelude being the uh, cruise missiles, 
and 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 I and I'm told that uh, both the B2 and the F117 would be also used in the initial waves. I'm very interested in the B2, and this is a new technology, really a maiden voyage into a combat situation. Why bring it out when the stakes are so high in the first wave? Well, I think the, uh, I'm not sure if it'll be in the first wave, but it'll be in one of the first waves, but um, I think the beauty of the, the B2 is uh, its stealth characteristics, and um, it's, uh, it's got a robust uh, all-weather capability. It carries uh, about 16 uh, 2,000 pound bombs, so giving uh, the weather problems associated with that region of the world uh, and its stealth characteristics, it seems like an ideal weapon uh, to be used in this NATO uh, of offensive. So you, you make mention here of the weather situation. I mean, given the smart technology beyond the B-2, why would that even be a factor? Uh, the weather a factor, you mean? And, uh, and, uh, yes, sir. Well, for some of the other weapon systems, uh, the guidance systems uh, need to be controlled. And if, in fact, uh, the weather gets in between that aircraft and the bombs that are going down towards target, uh, the link will be broken, and, in fact, they won't be as accurate as they ordinarily would be. And there would be some question of afterwards there being uh, the ability to assess what damage was caused. Well, obviously, uh, the, the problem with uh, assessing after the strike, um, and also you've got to be careful because uh, basically we want to make sure, or NATO forces want to make sure that they avoid collateral damage if in fact they can do that. We have very little time left, but I want to ask you based on your experience in the Gulf War situation, if you can talk briefly about what might make this different, the complexity of the political issues in the situation that might make this different and might uh, cause it to last longer than the Gulf War. Well, I think uh, we've got uh, two factions or two sides, uh, each with uh, uh, different reasons for uh, joining the battle. Uh, we have the 16, 19 nations of NATO that have signed up. Uh, this is going to be a full coalition effort. Um, uh, fully 45 percent of the aircraft are NATO aircraft in addition to the U.S. aircraft and high technology weapons. I think one of the things that struck me was when um, uh, uh, Ambassador Holbrook was uh, talking to Christiane after he had just come away from the talks. It reminded me of uh, 1991 when uh, Secretary Baker uh, came down the steps out of G Geneva after his conference with Tariq Aziz, again saying that the talks had uh, broken off and that in fact uh, uh, Iraq was, uh, was going to hold their position in Kuwait. The same thing kind of uh, struck me with Milosevic's uh, 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 ideas of not pulling back and agreeing to the NATO uh, plan. And a strong stance. General Neal, we appreciate your being with us for your... As the crisis in Kosovo intensifies, NATO forces gathering in Macedonia are on high alert. In the event of NATO airstrikes on Yugoslavia, there's concerned these troops, some in positions just a few kilometers from the Yugoslav border, may be the target of reprisal attacks. NATO says the troops are still getting ready for possible deployment in Kosovo as peacekeepers. We are here to do one thing and one thing only, which is to be prepared to implement a peace agreement uh, when it occurs. But with little sign of President Milosevic allowing this or any other force into Kosovo, the crisis in the province is getting worse. To move in and start separating warring Yugoslav Serbs and Kosovar Albanians, U.S. Special Envoy... Richard. New bombers took to the skies from RAF Fairford in Gloucestershire. NATO's chief says the aim of any action will be to try to damage the Serbian army and the special police so they couldn't continue to cause suffering. Yugoslavia has declared a state of emergency. Serbian troops are continuing their offensive against ethnic Albanians in Kosovo. Sky's diplomatic correspondent Tim Marshall has the first of our reports. He's in the Yugoslav capital. The last hours may have become the last minutes. The planes are in the air, and in Belgrade, they're waiting. B-52s flying from bases in the UK are shortly expected to be over Italy, from where they can launch their cruise missiles. Yugoslavia is prepared as much as it can be, and is moving to a war footing. So it's launched from the sea and air expected to pave the way for a larger bombing campaign. NATO issued the go-ahead last evening. The military alliance has a force of 350 to 400 aircraft aligned for the airstrikes, about half of which are American. The television has been reporting in the last few minutes that NATO airstrikes have begun.
that hasn't yet been officially confirmed. Well, gunfire closer to me this time. That again sounded like light, not heavy machine gunfire, so it's difficult to know whether that might be perhaps um, Serbs firing off um, their automatic weapons, their hand weapons, Kalashnikovs and so forth in anger as there's a similar protest towards what's happening here or whether it's uh, any other sort of uh, hostile intent. Difficult to gauge at the moment. Uh, I have a pretty restricted view here. But as I say, air raid sirens going off, automatic gunfire sporadic, and uh, three, at least three uh, heavy explosions within the past few minutes. And yes, but... In Kosovo, we too here in Belgrade saw two big flashes on the horizon. It appeared to be going on at almost exactly the time that it was going on in Kosovo as well. Here we have not heard any explosion, but we have seen two orange flashes light up in the distant horizon, almost beyond the city lights. We do not know, we cannot confirm to you exactly what those two may have been in terms of what they may have been hitting, but sources do tell us that there are, there is a military base near Belgrade, and indeed some say that there are anti-aircraft positions around here as well. Now, it doesn't look like any kind of massive bombardment, as Brent was saying. It is not at all the same sort of situation that we saw in Baghdad over the last few months, and indeed the entire city is still illuminated, the lights are on, people are still in the streets, it's light traffic, but there are people in the streets. As we've been reporting today, tension amongst the people has been rising gradually throughout the day as it became inevitable, they say, that something like this was going to happen. People have been stockpiling on gasoline, stockpiling on food and water and candles, and indeed the government itself on morning television and throughout the day has been broadcasting civil defense drills. So all we can say now is that we have seen two orange flashes in two different locations on the city's horizon here in the last few moments. We heard the first uh, explosions. We do not know what those uh, explosive impacts were, but I can tell you that within the past 60 seconds, the entire uh, city has now gone into darkness, blackout conditions um, that happened uh, just after those explosions which we first reported. Um, there are the odd vehicle movement around the city now I'm seeing um, sparkles of headlights as uh, vehicles, uh, civilian vehicles, as well as military vehicles moving about the city. It is ex an extraordinarily eerie scene here. Uh, the air raid sirens were sounding for a time, but they have gone silent. And as I say, the city is in virtual darkness now, uh, blackout conditions um, in anticipation of further airstrike activity. Exactly the same as the British ground attack tornadoes. The ones there looking at the, uh, the bellies of them, they're carrying anti-radiation missiles, missiles to take out SAM sites. So it looks like this is going to be a very broad-ranging missile, aircraft of many type attack. So perhaps a lot less limited as we originally thought. Uh, we are now talking, that's eight hours later, with no refueling in flight. They've got about an eight hour endurance, so they could have almost done this on their own internal uh, tanks. But as we speculated earlier, they were gonna go out, they were going to loiter over the Adriatic. There was no risk of these aircraft going into Yugoslav airspace. The cruise missiles on them have a range of over a thousand miles. So you can stand well back and uh, salve, salvo cruise missiles. We're just uh, hearing that uh, the uh, capital of Kosovo, Pristina, has been plunged into darkness. President Bill Clinton is talking at the White House. <clears throat> United States forces acting with our NATO allies have commenced airstrikes against Serbian military targets in the former Yugoslavia. I will address the nation more fully tonight on why this action is necessary but I wanted to say a few words now. We and our NATO allies have taken this action only after extensive and repeated efforts to obtain a peaceful solution to the crisis in Kosovo. Uh, but they were clearly visible to us. We were standing on the roof of a tall building. Um, there were no air raid sirens, no warnings at all to the local population, but this is the airport being hit, which, as I say, is quite a way away from the city. Is this the first sign that Montenegro itself would be a target? It is clearly the emphasis so far has been more on Serbia and Kosovo. Is this a surprise to the people of Montenegro? I think it will come uh, as a surprise to many here. 
they elected in 1997 a government that is opposed to Slobodan Milosevic, opposed to his economic policies and opposed to his other policies as well. And I suspect that the government here had hoped that they would not be uh, uh, hit as well. But the second army of the Yugoslav army, the, the second corps, if you like, is based here in Podgorica, in the Montenegrin capital. There are some 25,000 men of the Yugoslav army based here. Of course, the entire navy of Yugoslavia is based here. This is their only outlet to the sea. And they have air bases as well. In the past, this was the main training center of the Yugoslav Air Force. So, to a degree, it is not surprising that if one hits the Yugoslav army, one also hits the Yugoslav army in Montenegro. There could, however, be political repercussions, but Mr. Milosevic may use this situation to try and regain control politically of Montenegro. That's what many here are worried about. It could mean that we could see a form of civil war here. We will have to see at the moment. Certainly, it seems that the army is split in its allegiance, uh, mostly probably uh, still... Uh, uh, loyal to Mr. Milosevic, but some are loyal to his main opponent, the president of Montenegro, Mr. Djukanovic. And that has been hit, so that's, that's there. We've had strikes in and around Belgrade itself. Um, Novi Sud up here has also been hit. We had just heard from Arno van uh, Leyden about the capital of Montenegro being hit and big barracks facilities. Let's change that map. Just wipe that one, Francis, and we'll, we'll have the map. Uh, I think we've got a strikes map, which we can... There we are. There, these are some of the cities. We're still missing Nis, nice, unfortunately. <laughs> Unfo yeah, Nis nice is basically down yeah. here. We know Pristina. There's, you know, the first air raid sirens yeah. were there. The capital of Montenegro mm -hmm. uh, is, is there. That's been hit yeah. by, well, we heard him say six to eight missile strikes, probably. Um, well, you know, looking at it, it's, it's a north, south, east, west. It's as broad as uh, you can get. I, and this Montenegro, I mean, did seem a surprise to me. I, I didn't think that would be on the priority agenda, if you like. Perhaps, what do you think? Perhaps it's only uh, in terms of a large block of troops, possibly still very supportive of the Belgrade regime. They are, you know, in effect, next door to Kosovo. Should they then choose to um, be thrown into the Kosovo maelstrom, they couldn't uh, affect things in Albania itself. Perhaps that was the justification. Though, again, it might support those who say the political aspects of this campaign might not have been as well thought out as the military. Well, let's see, where does the military action go? This is presumably just the very forefront of the, the vanguard of this attack. Would you expect to see quite a considerable wave of attacks now through tonight? Well, it's going to be interesting to see whether the attacks follow the path we saw during Operation Desert Fox just before Christmas, where, interestingly, they only happened during night. There was no bombing during the day. It was almost a very regulated and uh, easy bombing campaign. It'll be interesting to see whether we see aircraft going in all through tonight and then through tomorrow and the next night. Will we see the rolling bombing campaign of a type we saw during the uh, Gulf War? Or well, that's all we've to got to go on, isn't it, really? We have no other modern everyone, experience. Well, those are the only things we can base it on. And to date, by and large, NATO and the US and the UK have always just done things at night, except really during the Gulf War where we did the much more the air bombing. But again, the issue is, will the bombing actually get you anywhere in the long run? Yes, there's a large target array all over uh, Yugoslavia, the former Yugoslavia, barracks, radars, command centers. But as we've seen with Iraq, you can go back and revisit targets again and again and again. It takes an awfully long time before you get rid of them. We're just the first explosion, certainly around the provincial capital of Pristina within the past 45 minutes or so. Uh, we've just been able to get out a short burst of night scope picture, which we took from our vantage point in the center of the city. We saw a couple of flashes uh, in the distance. We heard the rumble of two or three loud explosions, and we saw one burst of anti-aircraft fire shortly after a flare was fired into the sky. Now, soon after those explosions, I heard uh, various bursts of what I would describe as the city is now in uh, just about total darkness, blackout conditions. I can see some candles burning in apartment blocks from where I am, but to all intents and purposes, Pristina is now dark. Blue. 
supplemented by air-launched cruise missiles fired from U.S. B-52 heavy bombers that flew out of uh, bases in England uh, over the Adriatic, again firing their missiles from a safe distance away. But this uh, air campaign is just starting now. It's going to go through the night, and uh, again, it will involve manned aircraft, uh, stealth aircraft as well. In fact, sources indicate it's highly likely that by the time the night... Uh, initial salvo needs to be overwhelming on the part of NATO forces. Any idea how how long the, the cruise missile attack could take? How, how many of these missiles could be launched throughout well, the evening? We've been reporting that up to 100 cruise missiles would be launched in the... You know that they have more than that there, and it's certainly possible that the cruise missile strike could be uh, more sustained than that. But... Uh, uh, there will be probably at least a hundred cruise missiles fired off again with the aim of, of taking out Yugoslav air defenses that could threaten the manned aircraft that will be following. Uh, the first mission is to suppress those air defenses but we're also told there will be other targets hit tonight as well. We don't at this point we don't know exactly what the targets are except that they are all around Yugoslavia not just in the area of uh, Pristina and, and Belgrade the, the uh, Yugoslav capital but all around the country are targets that will be hit tonight and that this campaign will be heavy and sustained pausing uh, likely only for the daylight hours when uh, when it's uh, uh, not as safe to conduct these kinds of air campaigns but the Navy's version of the cruise missile is the Tomahawk it left from launch tubes in a sequential system sometimes their launches were separated by minutes at a time all of this designed to be carefully coordinated with a brilliance of almost a daylight as the missiles were climbing, powered by their rocket boosters, arching off in the direction of the nearby coastline. You could feel the deck vibrate with each launch. So far, uh, there have been about nine missiles that have been launched. Operations have ceased for a time, but no one on board ship is saying that the operation is over. We also did notice that we saw at least one cruise missile that was launched nearby from the U.S. Gonzales, which is a destroyer in the area. There are a number of vessels of U.S. origin, about six of them, that are capable of firing tomahawks. We can't see all of them. We can't tell if they have all taken part in the operation. But so far here on the U.S.-Philippine Sea, they have fired nine cruise missiles. And for now, they are standing by and probably awaiting to see what bomb, or what bomb damage assessment they get. We've also noted that uh, we have seen uh, waves of aircraft, these are believed to be friendly forces, following in after the missiles and then now they are just waiting to see what they hear from command and martin from where ship is located uh, there in the adriatic how long would it take a tomahawk cruise missile perhaps to reach its target well it, it's a good question to ask certainly it's also a sensitive one for the navy to try and answer they don't like to give you specifics as to how long it could take a missile uh, since anybody with a slide rule and a little bit of geometry might be able to figure out exactly where the, the missile was fired from. They do also say, though, even though we are close uh, to the area of engagement, that actually these missiles can go up and follow a rather circuitous route, and thereby they don't necessarily go the, the most direct or straight line. So actually, once they are fired from the ship, if you think it would only be minutes, it may actually be much longer than that. It just depends how the missile is routed, how the cruise missile, uh, once it gets out of its rocket mode, follows on the target, and those targets are very, very carefully planned out. Over the course of an hour and a half, uh, took off from Aviano's single runway. It was a, an amazing sight, as uh, some of the most sophisticated and most expensive hardware in the NATO and U.S. Air Force, uh, 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 the, uh, the, 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 that the NATO and U.S. Air Force own, uh, we're taking off uh, out of here. Uh, I counted uh, something close to 70 aircraft taking off of the 130 aircraft.